Good morning. I am Maria Rosa. I'm part of the Focolare community in Belfast and I am a parishioner of St. John's. A few days ago, a friend of mine shared with me an interview with a well-known Italian conductor, which was done the day before he died. He died from a progressive illness at the age of 48. I was very impressed by the force with which he said, we are made to be together. It was like his testament. Maybe it was so strong for me to hear that because of COVID-19. The coronavirus is making us fear one another. He is asking us to be isolated in our homes to be safe and to save others. It is, it is challenging the very fact to be together. If we look at that from a church perspective, it doesn't appear so good. Christ wanted his church as an articulated body, his mystical body, where each of us has his own task to fulfill for the benefit of the whole body. To be church is togetherness. Apparently, COVID-19 is dismantling that body. The priests are separated by the from the faithful. The sacraments are, can no longer be celebrated and we can't receive the Eucharist. This is happening in almost all countries of the world. And yet, I've never felt a lack of peace in me. I still have hope in a future better than the past, because I believe that God always manages to bring good out of a bad situation. I had experienced it several times in my life. When churches, when churches closed, I asked myself if there was anything specific I needed to do in the new situation. And I realized that no, my role wasn't changed. Now, as before, I am called to do the will of God. That is what God invites me to do through circumstances, through my duties, or maybe through one of his inner promptings. Yes, I miss the Eucharist. I'm looking forward to going to Holy Communion again. However, there are some other ways in which Jesus is staying with us. During these months, I focus on three in particular. The first, Jesus is in his world, especially in the Gospel. I can be nourished by the Gospel as I am by the Eucharist. And there is more. When I put the Word of God into practice, I model my thoughts, my feelings, my actions on Jesus' thoughts, feelings and actions. I learn to become more and more like Him. The second presence is Jesus in each of my neighbors, especially in those who are the least, who suffer, who are in need. He is there in them. It was him who said, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sister of my, or sisters of mine, you did for me. It's Matthew 25, 40. At 
whatever you encounter with him in one of them, he teaches us a lot. I can try to do something for him, something concrete, like the works of mercy he suggested to us. The third presence I treasured in this month is Jesus' presence in his church. He promised it in Matthew 28, 20. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. If COVID-19 prevents us from gathering together, let us remember that in Matthew 18, 20, Jesus also said, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Two or three is enough. He didn't say two or three cents, two or three scholars, two or three adults. He didn't ask for a priest to be present, no. He just asked that they be united in his name. That means that they agree to love one another as he loved us. To love one another is not a spiritual feeling. On the contrary, it is very, very concrete. We all know that it's not easy to keep love between us always alive. But it's worth it if we can have the, gra the grace of Jesus' presence. Like that, wherever we are, we become as a living little church gathered within. And where Jesus is, he brings the Holy Spirit with his gifts and with, with his effects, the joy, the peace, the light anxiety or fear will be overcome by that. Imagine how beautiful it can be to live like this in a family or among friends or among some politicians, for example, why not? Or in a community like mine. Jesus among us acts as he did in Palestine. He continued to attract, to communicate his good news, to convert, to guide the church towards its plan of communion and universal fraternity. In such a living community, people meet God because he is there. Jesus in the world, Jesus in my neighbors, Jesus in a loving community. These have been my three treasures in this pandemic period. And that is what I wanted to share with you. I close with a wish and a thank you. My wish is that our being St. John's community will continue to grow after the pandemic and that we can bring Jesus with us to everyone everywhere. The thank you is for Father Martin, who is working hard to leave, to not leave us alone, to build us in community beyond all the anxieties of these days. He is using every possible technical tool. God bless him and be with him always. Thank you also to all of you who have had the patience to listen to me despite my bad Italian accent. A good day to you all. Thank you.